Hey, what's up? Going to be starting to work on mastering, so I wanted to sort of uh, go through this process of, of using an automated mastering service and, and using what it turns out as sort of like a reference track for us um, because I think the only way to be valuable um, as a mastering engineer or somebody that does this stuff is if you can beat the machine that does this in, instantly, you know. Um, so during the process, I'll probably explain a little bit um, of some of the stuff that I find important about mastering. Um, but obviously, I've given you some, some additional resources that you can check out. But I'm here at lander.com. And, um, you know, you're going to have to go through and get a login and, and sign up for free and do all that stuff. But eventually, you're going to get to this spot. Um, so all I need to do is add a tune in here. So drag a file in. I'm going to take the mix session. This is still from before having the vocals in there. I got a couple of things left with that that I want to mess with still. Um, but this will give you an idea for, for this. So it's going to start loading this stuff and process it for a little bit. Now, one thing about mastering uh, is, is that it's like, in my opinion, it's sort of like the, the third out of three stages for recording for audio production, right? So you've got recording and mixing and then mastering. And re the recording process, the way I always like to, to talk about this is that we're gathering all the pieces to a puzzle. And then in mixing, we're trying to fit all those puzzle pieces together as best we can. And in mastering, we're taking that puzzle that we put together and we're framing it and hanging it on the wall. So it's sort of like this very subtle, elusive, Jedi mind trick sort of portion of the audio world. Um, so it looks like I've got my track in here. And it's preparing my preview. Let's see where we're at here. 38%. Um, but also in regards to mastering, there is sort of a different perspective on what it is based on where you live. So in the United States, mastering is definitely referred to as the final stage of the production process. But in the UK and a lot of other places, it's thought of as the first stage in the distribution process. Um, and, and I guess that's for, for a couple of different reasons. But really, you know, some people think of mastering as just the putting the finishing touches and the final um, bit of audio processing that you can do to make something sound perfect before it's released or something. Um, but there's more to it than that. It's also about track sequencing, deciding on an album what track order things should go in and how the, the album flows from one song to the next and packaging and what kind of audio formats is this going to be in and what kind of system will it play back on. All that kind of stuff is actually included in mastering. So looks like uh, my tune is ready. Here's my preview and it's going to let me switch back and forth between the original and the master and hopefully we can usually what it lets you do is create a master but in, in an mp3 format only and that's what we're going to do uh, so let's listen to the original and switch back and forth <laughs> we want to oh here we can we can go even even deeper the original the lander version and we can add something a, a different track completely as a reference something that we wanted to go for so you might put the original track in here and and listen to that let's see if we can do that go to my independent study folder and get the original There we go. This should be pretty cool to see like how it compares across all these different things. I'm wondering if I can like switch around while this is waiting. Um, well, I think it's important while this is loading that we explore at least, well, the difference between mastering a single which is what we're going to be doing, and then mastering for an album. Um, let's talk about mastering for an album first. A lot of time, like I had a student 
um, where I did a mixing and mastering class come in and said he was working on a project. He recorded his friend's band or whatever, and he was having trouble about dynamic range compression and about the overall loudness between different tracks that were going to be on the same album. And it was really difficult for him to go back and forth and sort of make adjustments to the master fader on all these different sessions without having any perspective. And, and I don't think it even occurred um, to this student at the time that really what you want to do is not be doing the mastering in the mix session, right? So if you're using FL Studio and you mixed all the individual pieces of, of your, your track, don't like apply some audio processing to the master fader within that session and call it a day. What you need to do is export a stereo audio file of your mix session and then put that in the new session with all of your other content that's going to be on the album. That way you've got a session that's filled with stereo audio tracks. Each one is a different track on the album. Then you start applying all the processes to each individual one, but you can easily go back and reference each track to make sure they're going to jive well together as opposed to having to close a session and, and then take a look back. So that's um, the approach you would use. The only th crazy thing is that now, more than ever, albums are less and less important. So we're doing these on an individual track basis. So we're just like want to make something sound good and loud, perfect it, and then push it out there because the... I don't know, the art of the track sequencing on an album is sort of fading. So let's take it, see if we can listen to everything. Should be able to switch back and forth now. Right, cool. <laughs> See it actually play the record. I thought it was going to play the record. Ah, see, so of course they're going to make you pay for, for additional things, right? But we can still hear the difference here. All right, let's create our master and see what we can do. All right, so I've got two free low quality mp3 is left but it, you'll still get the idea um, so here's the rate ten dollars for an a la carte wave file all right um, so this is going to download and what i'm going to wind up doing um, is well as opposed to what we just did here which is listen to the three back and forth i'm going to put those things into my daw so I can work on those. Um, and I'm gonna choose to use, um, at least for this demonstration when I'm loading it in, I'm gonna use Pro Tools for this one. All right, so it's still working on the, the actual mastering, but um, I'll, I'll get myself started here. So here's my Pro Tools session. And here's my original mix, right? So let's see if I can import in the long way here. Mix session wave file. Cool. All right, so there's that one. Uh, I'm also going to import um, the the weekend tune, my reference or whatever. Use that as a, a guide of sorts. I have to go through the whole rabbit hole here again, apparently. Here we go. All right, every time that I go through this too, I'm just going to really quickly save everything. So this is going to be my This is my master that I'm working on. This is my reference. And then I'm going to get the lander version in here too. So let's see where that's at. Master complete. 
So now I want to download my master and import that thing. All right, so back to Pro Tools and importing this time from my downloads folder. All right, so I know that this is like really exciting stuff, the importing process, but here's my lander version. And so I'm gonna move these together and I'm also gonna maximize the size of these tracks. And when I'm going through here, what I really wanna be able to do um, is sort of switch back and forth between the two things. So in Pro Tools, I have to change my solo mode to cancels previous. Right now, if I did a solo and I wanted to listen to the master version that I'm working on, then I wanted to hear the lander version, they would just both be playing at the same time. So I need those to cancel each other out. So I'm not sure what this would be in FL Studio, but here when I cancel the previous, I can solo this one and then solo this one. So I can listen back and forth. <laughs> Cool. Uh, so that's going to allow me to go back and forth and make sure that anything that I apply to process my version, that it's going to, you know, hopefully get up to par with the, with the lander version. I also don't want to see sends or anything like that. I want to see my inserts because I'm going to be adding audio processing, not to the reference, not to the lander version. I'm just going to try to make my master sound like the lander one. So what kind of audio processes go into this? Well, it's more dynamic range control, compression, equalization to try to, um, to, to reduce the, the clutter and muddiness in the mid-range, add a little sparkle on the high end, something like that. Um, you're going to find all sorts of information about adjusting stereo width and all these different things. And I want to be able to explore it in a couple of different ways. But I think for now, just experimenting with applying compression and equalization and searching through some of the other things that you have here um, that maybe a little bit of reverb to I mean who knows right the sky is the limit we just are experimenting here um, and we want to be able to get this our version to sound like the the lander version as best we can in a quick way um, but I think it'll be good for us to, to be able to do this a couple of different times and come up with different masters um, Real quick before I go, I think this is a great place for us to start. It's to just work for a week and try to get um, our version up to par with this Lander version. Some things that I want to, uh, some like analysis tools that I want to show you about that, that Pro Tools can give you is um, in this audio suite area. Um, I've got this gain plugin. All right. And what this is going to do is allow me to analyze a particular waveform and give me some specific information that is really important for the mastering engineer. So if I select my version, my this is now just the mix, right? I haven't done any mastering to it. I highlight it and I analyze it. It's giving me some information here that's important. I'm looking at peak volume. The loudest that this ever gets is negative 0.2 decibels. All right. And RMS is telling me what the average dynamic range is throughout this entire piece. Right. So I have an average of 18 and a half decibels of, of difference between the quietest and the loudest part over this entire selection of time. Now watch how this changes from the, the mixed version of mine to the lander version. Let's see what the peak then we have to analyze, again, a new piece of audio. It gets all the way up to 0 dB, and the average dynamic range is much less. It's 5 decibels less. So that means that it's compressed and it's louder more of the time. So these are, this is some of the information that you look for to get an idea of what's sort of going on here. So it has been compressed. Some of the dynamic range has been reduced in the lander version and overall the loudness reaches zero decibels as opposed to negative 0.2 and you can see visually sort of what's happening here too so 
um, that's an easy way to sort of get some information um, about what, what you can strive to. If I'm going to try to get to this lambda version, well, I need to make sure that my final output is going to be zero decibels and that I reduce the dynamic range by five decibels or so. That's one way, but there's also some other EQ things that are a little bit less visual or less easy to analyze. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll take this in strides, but I think for this first go around, you should definitely just get yourself a setup like this where you've got your reference track, you've got your mix, and you've got the lander master, and you're just really taking a stab at it, right? So EQ to reduce some, some muddiness or something like that, and just and dynamic range compression, see what you can do just um, with little information towards it first, right? Just give it your, your best shot on your own. And let's see where we get with that. All right, cool, man. I will see you next time.